look at how to dodge and burn in less than five minutes in Photoshop CC. This is the image we are going to work on and this is before, this is after. So we'll take this image from this to this. What's up guys? Welcome to Ghana Near Photography. In this Photoshop CC tutorial, I'll take you through how to dodge and burn very fast in Photoshop. We will dodge and burn in less than five minutes in Photoshop. I will include a link to my dodge and burn action so you can download it for free. Some people find it very difficult to dodge and burn, but I tell you it's a very easy thing, provided you understand what you're doing. This tutorial aims at helping you to understand it and be able to do it quickly in less than five minutes. First of all, to be able to do this in less than five minutes, you need an action. So you can either create your own action or you can get a pre-recorded action. I have one that I'll include a link in the description. So make sure you check it out. Creating your dodge and burn flow is very easy. First of all, what does it mean to dodge and burn? To dodge means to brighten and to burn means to darken. That's basically what dodge and burn is. So you dodge highlights and burn shadows. It's just like in makeup, contouring and shadowing, basically. Well, I don't know if that's true or not. The makeup artist, please correct me if I'm wrong. By that understanding that dodging and burning, it's highlighting and shadowing. Let's look at how to create our dodge and burn layers. So for dodge, since we said it is to brighten, we take a look at the curve. So this curve, if you go up, you brighten. If you go down, you darken. So for our dodge, we go up to a level where we feel it's okay. And then we create another one for our burn. So we look at curves again, then we go down how we want. See, basically we have one here. So let's disable this up one. So the one at the bottom here is for our dodge. So we can already name it dodge, enter. And then we know up here is burn. How you arrange them, it's up to you. But since we have the name dodge and burn, we would want to keep it like that. So dodge at the top and then burn at the bottom. So now the effect has been applied to everything. So what we want to do is invert it. Anything that's white reveals and then black hides. So this layer marks white here shows that all the effect is going to show, which is what we are seeing here. So we need to invert this to hide it until we brush it to show. So to hide it, the shortcut key is command and delete that will hide it for you on your MacBook. So let's disable that and then enable our burn and then we do the same thing, command delete to hide it. So we enable this. So right now you realize that our, our layers are not doing anything because we've hidden the effects that we added. So let's put both together and then command G will create a group. Then we name it dodge and burn basically this is a dodge and burn process how easy was that now if you don't want to be doing this all over for each time you want to use it then you record it as an action so you just play it once and it brings all these things for you within seconds so let's delete this then go to our action set and we have Ghana near dodge and burn once you click see it does the same thing dodge and burn so that's how you easily create your dodge and burn process now that we have our dodge and burn layers let's go to the real thing after creating your layers the next thing is to select your brush so shift b will cycle through the brush now i prefer using my flow you may decide what best works for you but what i have noticed is Modifying my flow works best for me. So I'll choose 3%. 3% for my flow. Then you may choose whatever works for you because I like building up the effect. I don't want to just brush once and then get everything. Now, the next thing after selecting your flow or whatever works for you is to select the hardness of the brush. I always love using a soft brush unless otherwise. For dodge and burn, for the mixer brush, 
I always like using a soft, a very, very soft brush. So my hardness goes all the way to zero. Now, the reason why I do that is because when I'm brushing, I want the edges to blend in. I don't want them to be very steep or very sharp. I want them to blend in very well to the neighboring colors. With the zoom, some prefer zooming all the way in, others to want all out. It depends what makes you see, what will make you see well what you're doing. So if yours is to zoom in and you get, you get to see exactly what you're doing, feel free. Sometimes I go in and out just to keep myself in control. So now for Dodge, we select our brush, it's white. White reveals black height. Now, one mistake most people do is, you know, you leave this to black, on black, and then you will be brushing and brushing and brushing and nothing will be happening and you'll be wondering what's happening. So don't forget to change this color here to white. White on black reveals. Black on black, you will never see what's happening. Before you start dodging and burning, you should already know what you want to achieve at the end of it. Now, there are areas where you should dodge by default and areas where you should burn, like the forehead. Wherever you see a highlight, you want to dodge. Wherever you see a shadow, you want to burn, just to bring out those features. So over here, as usual, you have to be altering the size of your brush. You don't just keep one size and brush all over. Otherwise, you end up ruining your image. So we keep altering the size of our brush with the bracket open or close to. So you see, we are doing this very big, reducing just to give us that gradient. Over here on the nose, the same thing. And then over here, we brush on. And the thing is, with the flow I'm using, it will be very hard for me to go overboard because I'll have to brush over severally to be able to see the effect. So these are the places where I'm dodging. Anywhere I see highlight. I used a harsh light for this shoot. So already the light has drawn the paths for me to dodge and burn. So I'm just following. I'm just making them more visible. So here, this line here, I'm just following it gently. So let's take a look at before and now. Before and now. See the difference? Now let's go to burn and then burn the shadows. The same thing. You work on the size of the brush. Don't use one size to brush all over the image. No. Please don't do that. So this is just enhancing the image, not changing it in totality. That will amount to transformation. So here, wherever we see shadows, we want to enhance them, make them you know, more pronounced. As simple as that. So let's take a look at this before, after, before and after. So those of you who are always scared of dodging and burning, this is where to start from. And what you should know is this is global dodge and burn. There is the macro dodge and burn, which involves more work. I'll tackle that in another video. But this global dodge and burn is to help you enhance your image. And as you can see, we have been able to enhance this image from this, which is almost flat. To this which has you know brought out her facial features we can go on and you know 
do more dodge and burn to make her facial features more pronounced but for the sake of this tutorial i don't want to make it longer so we'll just leave it like this and then continue with other stuff now let's talk about some of the mistakes people make when dodging and burning first of all you want to follow the natural features of the person you don't want to use dodge and burn to you know make things too obvious now if you dodge maybe somewhere here and you realize it's a mistake you did not intend to dodge that shadow some people will just pick the burn and then come and burn it no the best thing you can do is whilst you're on the dodge layer you pick the eraser you know well the best thing is to just undo but imagine you finished and then realized you overdid it there and you can't just undo all the way there just pick the eraser whilst you've still selected the dodge layer and then brush so that will negate whatever you did on that layer so once that is done you will go back to your brush and then continue with your stuff so that's it when, when you make a mistake when dodging or it applies to other stuff like frequency separation just select the layer where the mistake is select your eraser and then erase it it's just negates whatever you did over there so don't use burn to correct a dodge no if you made a mistake with your dodge just use the eraser to erase it same thing with the burn if you make a mistake don't use dodge to go and try and brighten it no just use the eraser and then negate it if you want more tutorials like this don't forget to subscribe to my channel like this video and share it with people you know who benefit from it